So we've got one more team, the team that traveled the farthest to be here, uh, and that's Stanford University. So Team Stanford, if you will, come to the stage. So hello everyone, uh, my name is Yanis and along with my partner TY, we'll show you two applications on how users and operators can coordinate in order to get the most out of their networks. So looking at this, uh, so over the last two days there is a main theme where we have multiple applications and then we want to access these applications through multiple devices and we want to do this from multiple locations. And in order to be able to do this, we need a network in the between which should behave properly. And when this is not the case, well, when this is not the case, you can't do much rather than waiting and complaining about it. I'm sure you, most of you have experienced something like that before, and it will show you a, bit, a little bit later in our demo a similar scenario. But before I go to our demo, let me briefly describe our setup uh, which will set the ground for the rest of the talk. So we've set up a small network back there, which consists of two main components. On the left side, you can see the home network, which consists of an access point, a couple of laptops, a phone, and a TV. And then on the right side, you can see our small representation of an ISP network. So there are several switches here, and I just want to make clear that all the equipment here is commodity equipment, and you can just buy it out from the market. Just keep this setup in mind. It will be prove useful a bit later for the demo. So let's switch into the demo right now. Think of the following. You've just started watching a movie. In that particular case, it's Star Trek from Netflix. And all of, all of a sudden, something like this happened. You don't know exactly what the problem is. It might be something in your home network. It might be something in your ISP network that causes congestion. You don't really know and you don't really care. The only thing that matters is that you don't see the video that you want to see. So wouldn't it be great if you could just have a button and when we press this, this button, it goes away and, and uh, fixes the problem whenever this happens to be. And this is exactly what our application does. We call it My Boost, and it's a single button browser ex extension, and you can think of it as follows. When you press the button, it calls your ISP and somebody who knows how your home network looks like, and it tells them, hey, I'm just trying to watch Star Trek at Netflix, and my network sucks. Can you please fix it? And this is exactly what our application does with a small difference. It doesn't make any actual call. It just goes ahead and fixes the network so that we can get our video back. And so let's see whether this works right now. As you can see, there is a button just right next to the address bar. And when we click it, we will just make what I described before. So why do you want to try and give a boost to Star Trek? So let's see. Just wait a few seconds. So this is a live demo. Hopefully it will work. And it typically takes a couple of seconds for Netflix to resume. And here it is. So just a few seconds after pressing the My Boost button, we were able to go and, and fix the network to behave properly. So what we've done is in, in My Boost detected the exact network traffic that corresponds to this particular video stream for Star Trek. And then it went and reprogrammed our network to make sure that there is enough bandwidth both into the ISP side and in our home network to make the flow come out smoothly. Now, my boost is just an example of an application of how the users can interact with a network. Just want to make clear this is not Netflix specific. It works with Hulu, it works with Voodoo, and we can actually make it work with any type of video, any type of content. This is a way where users can dynamically ask for more bandwidth. Now, there are some other applications where this may not be the right interface. Imagine, for example, that you have an energy management system or even your home, your home phone service. And what you want from your network for these type of applications is a reliable low latency channel to make sure that there is no interruption into your network. And for that end, we developed another application called My Home, which is a web application. And here is how it looks like. At the top, you can see that My Home detected the network topology in our home. You can see the blue line is the boosted Star Trek flow that we had before. And now what we want to say is we want to select which applications are useful for us and go and give them the network properties that we want. So let's go and select VoIP and say that we want the low latency traffic. And then when we save the changes, 
you can see that we automatically create this special channel with low latency into our network, and now all the traffic from our phone uh, from our phone goes through channel through this channel. We have a phone using Skype over there, and you can see that it actually sends data through this channel. So to wrap up. I just want to say that this is not about a specific interface, not about a specific service. It's about users and giving the users the control to express their preferences about applications and how they want the network to treat them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Why don't you uh, take to the center podium? Yeah. We will turn to our judges. I don't know why cable companies would be interested in network latency and you know getting the content out. At least not from Netflix, right, guys? So let's speak. Of, you ask everybody about this. What's the monetization plan for this for this application? Yes. Yeah, so we are currently stuck into this situation where the ISPs can provide only a, a best effort traffic, and then it's not clear how you can go how you can go and give some added value services to the users. And this is partly, I don't think it's highly technical, it's mostly political. And what this shows is that as long as you give the user the control on how, you decide, how he decides what, it's, what is viable for him, then you can sort of provide all these services as long as you give the user the control to say what is useful for him and what not. Also, this gives you an easy way to say that you can share your infrastructure with other companies like utility companies where they would like to, to sort of get some uh, smart metering data and stuff like, something like this out of their network. But as long as you can give the users the control to select which services they want, then I think there are ways to make money out of it by exploiting your infrastructure better. Another question from the judges? I think they got it. Thank you very okay, much. Great, thank you.